The fabulous Put it on my table Every month I don't wanna be sad Don't even try to hide it No I don't wanna lose it And you see how it is It's so important The fabulous We're all so online The fabulous Hello, welcome to the Papyrus TV Africa. This is your news update, and today is the 1st of November 2024. Happy new month. And may the blessings meant for you for this month come to you speedily in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. First, the headlines Senator Walker defends proposal for civilian firearms ownership. Acting Chief of Army Staff meets with security leaders in Abuja. State governors call for local fuel refining. Social media activist, very dark man detained. EFCC charges four former governors, two ministers in major corruption cases. Nasu Sanu to meet federal government over unpaid salary. Tinubu seeks stronger economic ties with France, China, and Denmark. Now the news in detail. Senator Ned Nwoko, representing Delta North Senatorial District, has reaffirmed his stance on the proposed bill allowing civilians firearm ownership as a major to curb Nigerian growing insecurity. Speaking on the issue, Nwoko argued that enabling citizens to legally bear arms would empower them to protect themselves against criminals. Recounting a personal tragedy, Nwoko shared how his senior legislative aide was kidnapped and killed last November in Abuja, stating, When kidnappers attack, they went from house to house with no fear. Had my aide or the residents been armed, such audacity would have been unlikely. The senator clarifies that his proposal includes stringent regulation to ensure responsibility firearms ownership emphasizing safety and accountability. In a significant gathering on Thursday, newly appointed acting chief of army staff, Major General Olufemi Olutoposun Oyedede, met with chief of defense staff, General Christopher Gwambi Musa, and national security advisor, Nuhuribadu. The meeting held at the national security advisor's office in Abuja came just a day after President Bola Metinumbu named Oluyede as interim chief of army staff, stepping in while Lieutenant General Taurid Lagwaja undergoes medical treatment abroad. Although the discussion's content remain undisclosed, sources indicate updates are expected soon regarding the security leadership strategy focus. Moving on, the 36 Nigerian state governors have raised strong concern about Nigerians' ongoing dependence on fuel imports, calling it a contradiction for oil-producing nations. Speaking on behalf of the governors, after a meeting with Mela Kiari, NNPC Group Chief Executive Officer, Imo State Governor Hope Uzadima stressed the importance of reviving Nigerians' refineries to meet domestic demand and ease the financial burden on citizens. Ozadima emphasized the need to support local refining projects like the Dangote Refinery while prioritizing the restoration of Port Harcourt, Wari, and Kaduna refineries. As an oil producing country, it's not right to rely on fuel imports while similar nations refine domestically, he said. The governor also urged that the fuel be priced in Naira to reduce import costs, promote job creation, and drive economic growth. They believe local refining will enhance employment opportunities and strengthen the nation's economy. In another development, reports confirm that social media activist and human rights advocate Martins Vincent Ote, popularly known as the Very Dark Man, has been detained by the Nigerian police following a video apology in which he wore a police uniform. Human rights lawyer Deji Adejaun disclosed that Very Dark Man was taken into custody after he responded to a police invitation on Thursday night. Adeyanju shared on social media, Our client, VDM, has been detained after responding to a police invitation just yesterday. VDM has consistently maintained that the Nigerian police are our friends, even though we all know they are not. This development comes after Very Dark Man's video sparked backlash 
prompting his apology and caution to the public to avoid using attire resembling official uniforms without proper authorization. Further updates on his detention status are anticipated. In another turn of events, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has charged four former governors and two former ministers in high-profile corruption cases, according to EFCC Director of Public Affairs, Wilson Uwajari, at a press conference in Abuja. These efforts, led by EFCC Executive Chairman Ola Olukoyede, highlights the agency's commitment to tackling corruption, with cases focusing on asset recovery and fraud prevention. The governors include Yahaya Belo Kogi, Abdul Fattah Ahmed Kwara, Willie Obiano Anambra, and Darius Ishak Taraba. Yahaya Belo faces charges involving 190 billion, while Darius Ishak is linked to 27 billion. Ahmed and his finance commissioners are accused of mismanaging 10 billion, and Obiano faced charges of laundering and embezzling 4 billion. Additionally, former minister Saleh Maman and Olu Ogunloye faced charges related to the Mambila Hydroelectric Power Project with alleged misappropriation totaling 33.8 billion and 6 billion. Hadi Saraki is also under investigation for fraud involving 5.8 billion and a probe into former minister Betaidu is ongoing. In the last year, the EFCC has recovered assets valued at $248.7 billion alongside $105.4 million and €510 Euro repatriated to respective countries. Notably, 14 properties were restored to the Enugu state government and 53 vehicles were restored to Canada. Olukoya Day emphasized that since his appointment on October 18th, 2023, the EFCC has achieved 3,455 convictions across financial crimes cases, underscoring a significant push towards transparency, highlighting challenges in the prosecuting electoral offenses. Olukoya de reaffirms the EFCC commitment to electoral integrity with recent efforts to come vote, trading, and prosecute offenders when arrest occurs. The Joint Action Committee, Jack of the Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and Association Institution, NASU, and the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian University, SANU, is scheduled to meet with the federal government today at 11 a.m. to address the ongoing strike over unpaid salaries, according to SANU Vice President, Abdusubu Salam. The union received an official invitation from the government on Wednesday evening. The meeting will be presided over by Minister of State for Education in the Minister's Conference Room, Salam confirmed. The indefinite strike, which started on Monday, is in response to our four months of withheld salaries impacting universities' operation nationwide. Sanu National President Mohammed Ibrahim highlighted that the unpaid salary affects not only union members but also top university officials, including vice chancellors, bosses, and registrar, in testifying the crisis. This is a long term issue. Our members will not return to work until all own salaries are paid, Ibrahim stated, noting 98% member compliance. The union demands the payment of withheld salary, improved benefits, and allowances, and the fulfillment of agreement with the government dating back to 2009. On a final note, President Bola Metinubu has called for enhanced economic cooperation between Nigeria and its key international partners, France, China, and Denmark, focused on advancing education, healthcare, and infrastructure. In a meeting at the State House on Thursday, Tinubu welcomed ambassadors from these nations, underscoring Nigerians' commitment to economic diplomacy. The event was summarized in a statement by Bayo Onanuga, Special Advisor on Information and Strategy. Tinubu expressed optimism about furthering ties with France, particularly with President Emmanuel Macron, ahead of his upcoming visit to Paris. President Malcolm has been a good friend, and I look forward to deepening our relationship to bring shared benefits to our citizens. Tinubu said, French Ambassador Marc Fombostier praised Nigerians' recent achievement, vowing to strengthen bilateral relationship. 
Tinubu also highlighted agreements with China during a discussion with Ambassador Yu Dunha, noting China's expertise in trade and infrastructure as a model for Nigerians' development. Ambassador Yu acknowledged Tinubu's leadership. Nigerians respect reformers like Yu. In his meeting with Danish Ambassador Jen Ole Ben Hansen, Tinubu praises Denmark's influence in democratic value and energy and commended the Danish-run MPM terminal in Lagos as a business success in Nigeria. Both leaders affirmed their commitment to partnership that delivers direct benefits to Nigeria, reflecting Nigeria's growing regional and global influence. This has been the Papyrus TV Africa. The Papyrus